the sun puts more energy on the earth in one hour than the human population uses in a year. And so if we can harness that and improve that technology, you know, there's a good chance that solar could take care of all of our needs in the future. And it's kind of free. A solar panel um, has uh, silicate crystals in it and basically the sunlight um, interacts with the, with the crystals and produces a DC voltage. Now one panel is made up of several cells and that's what gives you enough electrical output to be usable and then we string those panels together um, to get uh, roughly you know a five to six hundred volt um, signal from the panels. Um, you wire that to the inverters and the inverters converts the DC power to AC power which is usable. And depending on the size inverter and who makes it, uh, your inverter efficiency may run anything from 93% up to 98%. We're very excited about the megawatt side. The megawatt is capable of powering on the average 120 homes. Um, now given more efficient homes obviously that number would go up. It's more than uh, you know just a solar farm. Uh, it's something that uh, you know people in this area in this region are really going to be able to use and access uh, and hopefully uh, you know provide a, a, a lot of further education. Technically, it's a pretty simple installation, it, but it's a lot of panels. Um, the, it's a ground mount and then uh, four basic inverters, so, and then it connects directly to the grid. So there's not a lot of switching and a lot of mechanisms. 4,608 sharp 224 watt panels that are made right down in Memphis, Tennessee. The racking system is a Terrafix Solar Park racking system ground mount. People are seeing the, the benefits now of solar and the options we have. The solar installation here, we feel like from a community standpoint, it's the right thing to do. I just looked at what we were uh, looking at for the long term of having a place that was a sustainable with a low carbon footprint and figured this would, would be a good investment for us in the long run in terms of saving us money on our electric bill. When we put this on, we changed over to the electric heat pump and um, with the other changes. Now our total electric bill for a year is around $250. And that's including the heating. The one that's now measuring what we use is actually running backwards. You look over the past just two years, the price of solar has has come down remarkably. When we first calculated it out, it looked like it was going to be about 30 years. And, you know, there's no, the, the panels are guaranteed for about 50 years or are expected to last about 50 years. That's the key is solar's been so expensive for so long, it's just not been feasible. And now we've got incentives out there and we've got some government funding. Well, that's going to be a really big deal for us. The payback typically is going to be between seven and ten years without the grants. You add on the federal grant for our tax credit, the USDA grant, Generation Partner Program, you put those three things in there, and all of a sudden, in a rural area, using the USDA, you're looking at paybacks well under five years. The cost of our first system, which is roughly a 30 kW system, the cost of that was $201,000. So that left us, after grants, with $17,800 in actual money out. We're generating $800 to $900 a month in utility savings, and so that's a pretty fast payback. Here we're going to be putting in half a megawatt, 500 kW. Um, the system is going to be a ground mounted system and it's actually going to follow the contour of the land so we won't have to change, change the landscaping at all. Um, it'll be solar panels uh, down here at this brush pile will be uh, where our inverters will be mounted. Those inverters will allow us to either tie back to the grid or in the future at the end of the generation partner program if that contract, if they do not continue to buy renewable energy credits, they'll be able to take that directly into their plant. Whether you look at the cost of the system based on um, after the grants or before the grants, they've prepaid their electricity for the next 25 years. 
10 years is a, is a good uh, estimate on, on what a, a payback period is going to be for a homeowner. Now, obviously the limitation is the sun has to be out, so that's a limitation. But the advantages to it is this is a system that requires almost zero maintenance. On a routine basis, maintenance on a PV system is very minimal. Keeping the panels clean is the only thing. And as long as we have you know, good rain, that's going to clean them off for the most part. In the early spring, we get a lot of pollen, so we'll have to go up once uh, when that pollen gets heavy and, and clean them off. And that's about it. If it rains, an average amount of the rainfall we get here, it's really not going to be a problem. This year we had a time when the pollen was just terrible and there was no rain. If it's a homeowner or a small business has a system and maybe clean the panels once a year and then have a, 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 a solar contractor come out once a year and go through the system and check all the, the voltages and make sure everything's okay. You put it up on your roof, it doesn't ask you for a raise, it doesn't ask you for time off. There's really nothing that has to be done. Solar hot water is the best option for a homeowner. Uh, it's something that's affordable. Uh, there's incentives for it. You know, the federal incentive is there, uh, and it can it can really make a difference. You know, the investment's not 10 years on a solar hot water system. You may be down to three or four years. The house that we're working on here is the Heritage House, and it's been um, contracted by Knox Heritage. And this house will be the first lead platinum house that still is within the national historical requirements. This section of the home will have what we like to call our uh, Engler Solar Sandwich, which consists of a reflective membrane, PEX tubing which carries a food grade glycol, which will provide your hot water into a tank in the basement and which will make most of your uh, hot water, your domestic hot water. Then you have the metal roof which on top of that is laminated, uh, the photovoltaic. This system actually will collect energy from all three spectrums of light. So you're collecting energy with this from sun up to sun down and it doesn't require direct sunlight whereas a crystalline panel would. What you see on the roof right now is the PEX tubing um, and this is all part of the solar thermal hot water heating system. This will go down into the basement into a transfer tank. On this home here, because we're so limited with space, uh, this is probably going to provide maybe 25% of the electricity in the hot water. And with all of the tax incentives and grants that are being given right now, it's actually down to about a four year payoff. When you sign up on Generation Partners Program, that 12 cent premium they pay you uh, basically gives the rights to the renewable energy credits associated with that system to TVA. I think the future is broad. A lot of it's education. When we do these large utility scale systems, you know, everything is economies of scale. So if, if we're pulling, you know, large quantities of panels from the suppliers, large quantities of inverters from the suppliers, then those prices are going to continue to come down. All across the country, we're going to see more and more solar. And as that happens, the price will come down. It'll just kind of, uh, uh, kind of propagate itself. How does the utility feel about this? It's competing with them. Well, if we start looking at the positive things of solar for the utility, I'm not just talking about the environment and, and, and lowering your energy costs. It produces power at the time we need it the most. When people are turning on their air conditioners, that's when the power is on. So when you think about that, for four hours of the day, we have this real peak demand. Well, in order to supply that, we'd have to have another nuclear plant or another coal plant, but with solar, uh, we're only addressing those four hours a day, so it actually is an advantage. We don't have to have this overcapacity just to supply, you know, basically 25% of the day. So 10% of their utility bill will be fixed under the rate that they're paying in 2010. So uh, think about that in 2035 when everybody else is probably paying 30, 40 cents, they will be at three cents. Now. Uh, if you include the grant price on that and you reduce it and, and factor that in, golly, they're under a penny a kilowatt hour for the next 25 years. That's going to make this company obviously more competitive. It helps the rural communities. It's going to continue to create jobs. So this is a long-term investment into jobs into our future. Once again, as more and more private industry invests money into solar, it only brings the price down. And although this uh, project here is small and it's not going to create that much energy, realize if, if every one of these houses here had these systems on them, it would clean up the energy in this neighborhood and it would cost less for all of them to provide their own energy. 
and so it just makes it better and better for everybody. We can't eliminate, you know, um, our dependence on fossil fuels overnight. You know, we can't get rid of all the coal tomorrow, and we can't get rid of all the gas. But if we if we have a good plan, you know, and we put a focus on it, then we can significantly reduce our dependence on that. Because the power is actually being created right here in the neighborhood, going back into the grid, there would be there's less loss coming in through the lines. Now imagine if you had all of these houses had this power on here. It cleans up all the energy for the entire neighborhood. If you add that into bigger neighborhoods, we clean up even more. We are poised to be um, not only uh, national le leaders in clean energy technology and solar technology, I think we'll be international leaders. I have not lived in a community where so many uh, pieces of the puzzle have come together and worked together for a common cause. I do think that other businesses should invest in solar power because, you know, being greener helps them, or just like it does us, it helps us maintain a competitive edge and it helps us to grow our business here in the state of Tennessee.